Hey, what's going on, Dodgers Nation? DMAC here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball all offseason long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Do you think the Dodgers mishandled and mismanaged Max Scherzer when he was with the Dodgers? And two, do you think that Max Scherzer threw the Dodgers under the bus? Let me know down below in the comment section. And for all the latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. Max Scherzer was phenomenal in his short stint with the Dodgers. In 11 regular season starts, he posted a 1.98 ERA. In the postseason, a little bit of a mixed bag, but still finished with a 2.16 ERA. Well, he ends up not re-signing with the Dodgers. He signs with the New York Mets. And yesterday, he had his introductory press conference through Zoom. And we're going to take a look at some very interesting comments he made about how he was managed by the Dodgers and how they used him in just a second. But first, I want to say is, does anyone know anything? Because for the longest time, the word was that he only wanted to sign with a West Coast team, that he wanted to sign with a team from California that was a World Series contender. And then all of a sudden, he always wanted to play on the East Coast close to Jupiter, Florida, where he's from, where his house is, where his kids are growing up. So my question is, does anyone actually know anything? Because that proved to be the opposite of the truth when it came to Max Scherzer. But now we're going to look at these comments comments that he made here give a listen to Max Scherzer talking about how he was managed by the Dodgers in the season he kind of hints at being mishandled that he was compromised here give a listen I want your thoughts and then we're going to do a deep dive into the numbers I'm going to tell you what I think um how I reflect upon the, the game five and, and how I was used um and I, my, my conversations with Doc and Freeman uh that I, I had done that in 2019 in the World Series run and I pitched a wild card game, had made a relief appearance, made a couple more starts, and you know was able to do that. Um, I thought I was in the same position to be able to do that here in 2021. Um, I just thought, reflecting upon that in Washington, um, I was asked to pitch on the five day and pitch 100, 110 pitches consistently. I was stepped on all the time, and I loved it. Like that's, I, I was built up to a much uh, higher uh, kind of work capacity uh, in DC. So when I got asked to do that, I felt like my arm could respond to that. Um, and rightfully so with the Dodgers, uh, there was major concern to protect uh, Walker and Julio Zennings. And I, I 100% support that. We made decisions to uh, give extra days out um, you know, on a consistent basis and, and watch our pitch counts for the postseason. Um, I just feel like that uh, lowered my work capacity so that when I tried to do the 2019 formula of, of being able to pitch out of the pen, uh, my arm wasn't able to respond to that because uh, I came from a lower pitch count uh, you know, per se. And so... That's why I didn't get hurt. Uh, that's why I didn't hurt myself. Um, but I was definitely compromised uh, from uh, trying to execute what I was trying to do in 2019. So um, you learn something new every time. Never thought in a million years. I've never asked the manager uh, for the ball and, and gotten hurt like that or not, or not be able to make my next start. That's just never happened to me. Um, in, in all of all of my years of pitching, uh, you can ask all my managers. If I tell you I can go, I can go. Um, this was the first time I ran into something like that where uh, I really thought I could do something and it didn't show up. And so, you know, that's where I went. I, I, you know, it took me a while to search through that. Like, what happened? What was the difference? Why Why was I not able to execute the 2000, you know, for me, the 2019 postseason plan? Uh, and that's what I came to. I actually do appreciate a candid response. We're in the era of a lot of cliches and this and that, so I'm actually appreciative that he was honest about this. But the second thing I want to say is, look, Max Scherzer, I have nothing but respect for you. You are an MLB legend. You are a first ballot Hall of Famer. You're in the conversation for the pitcher of your generation, along with Clayton Kershaw, who would be my pick, and Justin Verlander. And then also, you're one of the greatest competitors that this game has ever seen. At the same time, when you're a competitor, you have to be just a little bit delusional. You have to tell yourself you can do things that you might not be able to do. That's how these guys are. They will themselves to perform on the field. And while Max Scherzer is still a great pitcher at 37, he does have to kind of come to grips with his capabilities at this point in his career. Was it how the Dodgers manage you or does it have more to do with the fact that you're a 37-year-old pitcher that's thrown 2,665 career innings regular season and postseason combined? And then also you add the fact 
that in 2021, it was the first season that was back to normal, a full 162 game season coming off that 60 game pandemic short in 2020 season. And then you also add the fact that you were traded mid season from the Nationals to the Dodgers. And why are you traded to the Dodgers? To be the savior, to put the team on your back and lead them to a World Series championship. So one, you're trying to empty the tank for the Dodgers, trying to show your new teammates how good you are. And then on top of that, you're in a Cy Young race. You're trying to become only the fifth pitcher in the history of the sport to have more than three Cy Youngs. It would have been your fourth in your career. You ended up finishing in third place. And then on top of everything else, you are in a contract year. You're trying to get another bag, which you most definitely did, $130 million. And I know that dead arm didn't affect you when you were signing that contract. So look, we knew you were great in 2019. We also saw you were great in 2021. But that little moment right there, it almost felt like he was Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite. Back in 82, I used to be able to throw a pigskin quarter mile. Are you serious? I'm dead serious. But you guys know I bring my facts to the fight. So let's take a deep dive into the numbers to see what Max Scherzer is talking about. So Max Scherzer averaged 103 pitches per start in 2019 and 94 pitches per start in 2021 with the Dodgers. But if you take out his start in Philadelphia that ended prematurely because of a rain delay on August 10th, where he went just three and a third innings and threw just 58 pitches, and then his start against the Braves in early September, September, where he went six innings pitched and threw 76 pitches, but left early with a tight hamstring, he would have averaged 100 pitches per start with the Dodgers. So considering the fact that he was pitching well in both of those games that he had to leave early, the one in Philly, that was because of the rain, and the one against the Braves, that was because of a tight hammy, that he would have gotten close to a 100 pitch average with the Dodgers. Now in that Braves game, he was just very efficient, 76 pitches in six innings of work. So hey, he has his own self to blame in that one and then the elements with the Phillies he would have gone deeper into that game and if you look at that close that is 103 pitches in 2019 and 94 in 2021 if he doesn't leave those two games early his averages would have been much closer to 100 pitches per start look let's just say we replace the 58 pitches against the Phillies on October 10th and the 76 pitches against the Braves on September 1st with 94 pitches he would have been averaging 99 pitches per start. Now this year with the Nationals, nine of Max Scherzer's 19 starts came on four days rest. That's 47%. After he was traded to the Dodgers at the deadline, Scherzer made 11 starts. Seven of those starts were on five days rest and four were on four days rest for 36%. So yes, he did pitch on longer rest more with the Dodgers, but you look at his innings count total, he threw 179 innings last season compared to 170 in 2019. So yes, while there is an innings increase compared to 2019, I wouldn't focus on that because one, not all innings are created equally and two, it's more about the pitch count and the days off when it comes to rest. So yes, he did pitch on longer rest with the Dodgers, but when it comes to the pitches total, it's relatively close and two of those were factors that weren't the Dodgers' fault when it comes to the hamstring injury and Mother Nature, the rain in Philly. So look, I have nothing but mad respect for Mad Max and I enjoyed watching him in Dodger Blue even though it was for a short period of time but I just think the reality of the situation has more to do with his age how many innings he's pitched how he emptied the tank late in the year for the Dodgers so I don't think it's necessarily how he was managed I mean that's just to my opinion I do think that yes it might have been a factor but I also think the organization would have respected Max Scherzer in what he wanted to do they're not going to say no to Max Scherzer especially because the organization wanted to re-sign him we saw how Trevor Bauer was going deeper into games than the organization typically like to see with some of their other starters. But let me know down below in the comment section. I'm really interested to get your takes on this one. Do you think that Max Scherzer was throwing the Dodgers organization under the bus? Do you agree with Max Scherzer? Do you think he was mishandled with the Dodgers? I mean, I guess looking back, Max Scherzer was trying to tell us when he said, don't effing touch me, not to touch him when he's out there on the mound and to not pitch him on longer rest. But it's an interesting topic.
topic. I think Max Scherzer knows his body better than anyone else. And at the same token, at some point, you're going to have a decline as far as athletic performance. Look, if he was in the prime of his career, would he have suffered that dead arm in the postseason? That's an interesting question. If you look at his velo, it was still relatively consistent. But I just think the numbers indicate otherwise. But let me know down below in the comment section. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball all offseason long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. For all latest Dodgers Nation merch, head over to gearup.la, download the new Dodgers Nation app for my Android iPhone users. For latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.